This is a synopsis of our last 13 years, 2008 to 2021. The saying, our heritage, our legacy, uh, which actually Robert O'Brien uh, came up with the, the, the second word is, is really apt because uh, basically what are we doing with our heritage becomes uh, the question I think for all of us. Um, I came in 2008, uh, great timing, uh, right at the heart of the Great Recession and uh, came from an organization, Georgia Trust for Historic Preservation, which had 25 staff uh, to an organization uh, that it, it turned out um, had fewer than one. Uh, there was one staff member, but she'd gotten a great offer as a curator uh, to work at, at a museum. So she was there two days a week and uh, very quickly did a list of the things that the group did. And I discovered that, that basically the two organizations did the same thing. The only difference was there were one or two of us in Maine and there were 25 in, in Georgia. So right from the start, I sort of started out behind to be quite frank. Um, and those things in red were all the things that had to happen in the next month. Uh, so it was a very busy, uh, busy landing period uh, in Maine. Um, but I found uh, a great uh, number of collaborators to work with um, and uh, we managed to get through that early session. Now, early in my, in my tenure, um, I, went, I was invited to Norway with Kirk Money. Uh, to do a presentation. And I had an opportunity to go into the Norway Opera House, which was closed at that point, really kind of condemned, um, and look at it. And it was raining that day, and it was raining inside uh, the, uh, the Norway Opera House. And I uh, looked, uh, went around the back and saw that there were actually some structural issues uh, that were really kind of scary. Um, and it looked like the building was about to go. So during my presentation, I, I talked about, you know, having some concern about it. And it was being offered for sale for $800,000, which was about four or five times its value. Uh, so people uh, asked me in the audience, well, uh, you know, what can you do? And I said, well, you know, there is some danger there. Um, maybe, uh, maybe you ought to think about uh, condemning it. Um, it's maybe a public safety hazard. Um, and that got out of my mouth before I could shut it. Uh, the next day's newspaper had the headline, preservationist says condemn historic building. And one of my friends from Georgia was staying at a, had a, had a camp in a, in a pond just up the road and came up and said, Paxton, you've been here about a, a month and you're already uh, on the front page. What are you doing? Um, but what happened was Norway got involved and they raised rapidly from one donor $200,000 and a lot of other money and began to do an historic uh, tax credit project. It took several years to get it all uh, figured out. Um, but by 2013, they were finished um, and had done a, a magnificent job on the lower floor. So uh, Tara, you inherit the upper floors of uh, the Norway Opera House, and hopefully you won't make an, as much a mess of it as I did. But um, at any rate, uh, the lower floors are now fully occupied. In fact, the business uh, started here and then moved out uh, to Portland, uh, was so successful. So uh, this, this has been a real success story. And the people of Norway with their then town manager, David Holt, really came to understand revitalization through preservation. We also went up to Dover Foxcroft and uh, saw uh, the American woolen mill. And, um, and we met an interested developer from Kansas City, Jonathan Arnold, and early on helped him get started on this project. Uh, CEI helped him put it together as financing. Um, and uh, as a result of it, um, this building got underway. And uh, in the little town of Dover Foxcroft, uh, they did uh, about a $10.7 million rehabilitation of this project. And it's really transformed the town. Um, and, and the reason they were able to do it was they'd done a strategic plan and said, what would we like in our town? And all of these items were on their list and all of those items were accommodated in that little build, in that big building. So this little town of 4,000 uh, very rapidly uh, got going on its own uh, with the help of, uh, of, of their developer and other friends. Um, the Pennell Institute uh, was condemned by the town of Gray. Uh, we, ho we hosted our most endangered historic places uh, listing um, in, in 2008 in the building. Um, and uh, as a result, over many years, uh, the town ended up using it and doing construction and making it into their town hall. So uh, that was really fun to see that uh, outcome occur as well. Very early on, we were fortunate the National Trust developed a, a, a state program uh, to hire uh, field service people. 
And we received uh, the uh, one of the highest gifts in the country, tied with California of all places, which we shared with Greater Portland Landmarks. And we're able to hire Rochelle Bohm and then split Chris Kloss's time between the two organizations. Uh, and they were our two uh, uh, field service uh, advisors at that point in time. Uh, Rochelle and I went up and saw Musée Culturel du Mont Carmel uh, very early on uh, up in uh, Rustic um, and uh, saw the outstanding work that's been going on there for, by, for more than 30 years uh, by Don Sear, um, who we later recognized uh, with his contractor, Terry Helms, for the great work that still goes on there. And coming full circle, we were able to give a grant to it uh, most recently uh, from uh, a program you'll hear about in a minute. We went into the Colonial Theater um, and met with some folks. It had the biggest slash across the floor I've ever seen in a building, eight feet uh, wide, all the way across the middle of the building. But it looked sound. So uh, Pete Haney, uh, Pete Lincoln of, of Lincoln Haney, uh, did a $500 assessment worth more like uh, five, 10 or 20 times that on the building and pronounced it sound. So work uh, began to get underway with uh, some support. And this is what it looks like today. It still needs a lot of work on the inside, uh, but they've actually restored the outside um, and are moving forward. And again, another grand award winner. We were in Lewiston and heard about Albert Kahn, the nationally known architects, Bates Mill Number no. 5. Um, and actually the economic development director told me he was this close to being able to get that building torn down finally. And now uh, being redone very well by developer Tom Platts. It's a tax credit project in this very challenging building. It's a beautiful building, but it's not an easy building as you saw because of its breadth. Uh, so we're very excited to see uh, that uh, tax credit project happen. And among other uh, unlikely rescues was the Wood Island Life Saving Station where Aaron Sturgis was uh, directly involved um, and with a number of, of other collaborators led by Sam Reed, uh, this building which was really almost beyond the beyond um, has been totally brought back. Uh, this almost looks like a, a, a fake uh, photograph. So I, I gave you one with a, with a fishing boat in front so you know it's for real. Uh, the exterior has been totally redone and there's more to do on the outside. Um, we also worked in Camden uh, with the Mary Taylor School, which uh, was proposed to be demolished. Oops, sorry, um, I've started to go on auto change here, apparently, um, and, um, and, and got uh, saved uh, in, in, in concert with uh, the local uh, folks that really got behind it. We uh, all, were, all were not successes. And here is uh, the Mount Agamenica School um, in York, uh, which we tried with local partners uh, to save, but uh, were unable to. So uh, it's always a, a battle in preservation and you can't win them all. Uh, in 2009, we did a green rehab conference. Um, and the purpose of, of this conference was to focus on the, on the relevance of historic preservation um, uh, to um, historic, uh, uh, to, to energy savings. Uh, we did it in the Masonic Temple in Portland. It was the first time there was a major activity in that building that wasn't uh, related uh, to the Masons. Um, and it would make a marvelous uh, convention center. Uh, look at the scale of this uh, really outstanding and amazing uh, building. Uh, but anyway, we had our conference there. It was a national conference. We used Skype and GoToMeeting, which was innovative at the time. Uh, had speakers from all over the country uh, involved. Um, and, and talked about the relationship of historic preservation uh, to uh, the green agenda. And then uh, we put a number of things on our most endangered list. Uh, old growth wood, which we've learned is more than 10 times denser than new wood, which is why it lasts so much longer. Uh, the embodied energy of uh, buildings. Uh, this was all part of our, I think, 2010 uh, most endangered list. And uh, historic windows. Not sure we re we've really been winning that battle, quite frankly, um, but it's it's worth it. Uh, and then moved into energy in a, in a more direct way, thanks to the planning office uh, of the state, which we then had, uh, which uh, asked us to be involved in a project with the Department of Energy. And Ann Ball, who you just heard from, uh, directed that project. And what we did uh, was we developed a series of principles on what to do in order to uh, preserve your historic buildings. And one of them is analyze it. Uh, from uh, the, the start. Um, and we found a number of uh, sources. Uh, Robert O'Brien found this great uh, old house uh, journal 
uh, which talked about some of those features that people need to, to keep in place, as well as, of course, being open to the new features that are absolutely necessary in new buildings. Um, but note, noting of insulating attics and retaining uh, and weatherizing windows and doors and sealing gaps will uh, play a huge role in moving forward. And if you tear down this building, it's going to take you 40 or 50 years with a new net zero building to get back to even. Uh, so that's why uh, good preservation practice is so important. We also uh, coordinated uh, with the Maine Downtown Center um, on a revitalizing Maine's community conference and did a few others with them. And in fact, Ann and I had been talking about doing one, I guess, last year, which became maybe this year, which maybe becomes maybe next year uh, together again. Um, we moved in 2010 to our new headquarters. Uh, this is what it looked like uh, when we moved in. Uh, we cleared off some trees and then cleared off some more. Those were overgrown shrubs, basically, that had been a, uh, a hedge. Um, and, uh, and the Reuben Merrill House uh, from uh, 1858 was our headquarters for nine more years um, and is now um, at, at the new home of, of, of someone. Um, the Bath Freight Shed uh, also was one of those uh, fun projects that Chris got very involved in helping them uh, to stabilize it in order to move their farmer's market indoors in the winter um, and has served in that purpose or did serve uh, you know, before the late unpleasantness. And then old Surrey Village Schoolhouse was in our most endangered list. Um, and it's really fun to be involved with these projects for a long time because ultimately it became an honor award winner uh, due to the great efforts of the people of Surrey. We've been involved in historic rehabilitation tax credits uh, right from the start. Um, uh, while I was still in Georgia, I was lobbying uh, for this and then uh, got here along with a number of other collaborators uh, seeking to get this uh, legislation passed. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, they had passed a, a credit for only the Kennebec Arsenal in 2006 and only Hathaway Mill, which you just saw in Waterville in 2007. So in 2008, uh, it was passed for the entire state. And we've played several roles in it. Uh, we've overseen four economic impact reports in conjunction with other collaborators. Uh, we've compiled data on current project status using the Maine Historic Preservation uh, Commission stats. So we have sort of up to date, where are we with it? Uh, we've provided startup consulting to about 50 of 150 uh, of 130 of the statewide projects that have taken place since. And the investment in those projects is uh, almost $600 million at this point in the little state of Maine. We've partnered on five projects as a 1% owner, which you heard about a little bit in the treasurer's report. And we've advocated with these uh, same partners that I talked about with the economic reports for passage and extension of the sunset of the credit uh, in 2011, 2020, and uh, this, this current year. Um, our partnerships. So these are the projects that we got involved with, uh, with the 1%. By a nonprofit partner being involved, you don't have to pay federal taxes on the state tax credit. So we are the state tax credit partner with uh, Sullivan School, uh, Berwick High School. You see Chris Kloss with David Bateman, who is the developer of this, and two of our other projects, and a couple of befores and afters there. Um, Bates Mill number two, the Zanton Company, uh, they did half of the building, uh, the half you can see, um, and uh, turned it into affordable and, and market rate housing called the lofts at Bates Mill. Um, and Boiler House Lofts, again, an affordable housing project with Bateman uh, Partners, plus uh, the Inn at Diamond Cove with Bateman Partners. Uh, this is uh, what the building looked like uh, before it was started. Uh, they did a whole lot of work on it, and it was within two weeks of opening uh, before this happened. Uh, it was almost completely burned and off they started again, had good insurance coverage. Um, and the result was uh, a, over $20 million, if you count both times, uh, the Inn at Diamond Cove was established in 2015 and that partnership uh, just uh, sold out. Um, we also, our fifth project was 660 Congress Street with Ken Guimond. Uh, this is a building that had suffered a couple of fires um, and was a, a Francis Fassett uh, building, one of the great architects of the 19th century, um, was beautifully uh, redone uh, 
by Ken um, and is uh, now apartments in the upper two floors, two apartments on one on each and, uh, and then a commercial space on the ground floor. And he did an amazing job in the interior, which was basically gutted from the fires. So as a result of these, uh, we've uh, been involved in the total investment of $37.9 million in, in projects. Uh, 103 uh, affordable housing units were created, 17 market rates, uh, 44 new rooms at the inn and six businesses. Um, it's interesting that uh, a lot of the interaction with our endangered properties has resulted uh, from tax credit projects. And one of our board members bought this off of our, uh, Cindy Taylor bought this off of our most endangered list and restored it, put housing on the top and commercial buildings, uh, commercial uses on the ground floor. And then Chris got involved with Rennie's and made some recommendations which resulted in their saving money using a credit and having more retail space as a result uh, of his efforts. He also was the complete uh, 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 consultant on the Sisters of Mercy Convent in Lewiston, which became the Center for Wisdom's Women uh, or Sophia's House uh, for Abused Women in, uh, in Lewiston and is now uh, an active use in that purpose. So we figured out at one point, well, we need to try to map all this. This was uh, Vermont's idea, Paul Brun. So uh, we put on one map uh, all the things that we'd done for a, a period of two years. Um, and this is what it ended up looking like. And as you can see, we're really all over the state. Um, and a lot of it was green, was field services. That didn't mean we made a visit necessarily, but it's a project that we helped with uh, on the phone. And, and these, this is the color code for the various things uh, that we were involved in then. Um, our preservation easements had long been a part of, uh, of the organization, um, and we had six, six easements. Uh, we've since uh, added a whole number, uh, including uh, the National Historic Landmark, Harriet Beecher Stowe House, where uh, she lived when Uncle Tom's Cabin was written. Um, and uh, the EC Record House is a future easement uh, from Pat and Dave Ledley in, um, um, in Buckfield. Um, and, um, and we also worked uh, with the Smith family on their family home, um, which was uh, in the hands of USM uh, to help get it um, uh, properly restored, although we did not end up with an easement on that project, but we're very involved in it. And we did set up with the help of the 1772 Foundation, what we call a revolving fund program initially. And because that's such a confusing name, ended up renaming it Protect and Sell. It's acquisition by option or purchase and help and resale of projects. Uh, these are architecturally historically significant property, usually in challenging circumstances and are resold with an easement. Uh, so a whole slew of those. Uh, the first was Rock Rest uh, back in about 2011 with Richard Candy's uh, great help. Um, and uh, after this project, we really, oh, by the way, the interior was donated to the Smithsonian uh, African American um, uh, Cultural Museum. Um, and uh, But after this project, we decided with the real estate market, we should uh, hold off for a while. And so it was another uh, uh, six or seven years in the middle of, of the uh, 20 teens that we uh, did our next project, George Washington Lodge, the Oddfellows Hall in Pembroke uh, with this beautiful interior. Uh, Robbins Anderson House in 1790 with Sa in South Thomaston. We did this in collaboration with the Georges River Land Trust, which owns 200 acres around it and five acres go with the building. Uh, that is just finally being redone by its owner. Um, and some of the uh, nice woodwork there. Um, and that brought us, uh, because of George's River Land Trust, into engagement with the Bernard Langley Home and Studio in Cushing. Uh, the Kohler Foundation uh, offered to either demolish or restore the house. And George River was gonna have this as a, a preserve. And uh, we helped them uh, figure out what to do, worked with Kohler. Uh, and Chris was the project manager on getting this house restored, and it's now actively open to the public. This is his studio, uh, which was really completely redone, uh, but then all put back. And you can see uh, sculptural pieces of animal parts and all kinds of things. It looks like he left it yesterday. Uh, the Abijah Buck House um, uh, was Buckfield's namesake. Um, and uh, Carrie Jackson donated this house to us, which was extremely generous. Um, and it was a great project to be involved in. Uh, Richard Irons discovered that there was a second beehive oven uh, back here in the chimney on this house. Um, and then ultimately after we'd sold it to the grants, bought it. 
So Richard is now finishing uh, its restoration. Beautiful high style woodwork in this house, uh, which is very much in the country in Maine. And during the work on the chimneys, they discovered all of these uh, elements, which helps keep the spirits away uh, that were hidden in the chimney. The James Crooker House in Norway, working with the town uh, of Norway again. Uh, the Cosmopolitan Club needed a new owner and our former uh, executive director, Tom Johnson, got involved with that. We worked with the Grand Trunk Railroad Depot, worked with the Village Improvement Society of Yarmouth, which for 50 years owned and maintained this building. And then uh, we were able to sell it to Ford Reiki and uh, Gorham Savings did a beautiful job on its uh, rehabilitation and uh, helped with the William Robinson House on which we have an easement. Um, and helped in the sale with the aid of our trustee and realtor, Rick Bisson. We're also working with the National Park Service on the McGlash and Nickerson House. We helped to save it. Uh, it uh, is, it's extra from their visitor center up there for uh, the International uh, St. Croix Historic Site. Um, so uh, uh, the estimate for the complete rehab is about 250,000, though they've done an awful lot of work on it themselves and worked with, um, Linda Bean on uh, the uh, Dummer House, which has been moved from its second location to its third location and is awaiting restoration uh, in the near future. We also collaborated on the Maine Steeples Project and a partnership was begun by an anonymous donor um, uh, uh, with Maine Preservation in 2007 uh, with Roxanne Eflin before I came and the Maine Community Foundation, but it's now independent. And this supports local efforts to re restore church steeples the fund has invested more than $1 million um, in 60 church buildings. And we've uh, conducted about 35 pre-assessments for this program, uh, which has really changed steeples all over Maine. Um, we're also working in the Strathglass Park uh, project. Uh, CPH Gilbert, who designed this beautiful building, the Ukrainian Institute uh, in, in New York City, Terry, you may be familiar with it, also designed this entire neighborhood. Um, and we hope uh, to, uh, uh, be able to get uh, a couple of these buildings uh, redone in the, in the not too distant future. Uh, we were held up in a court case for two years to clear the title. Uh, finally, I'm not gonna show you much about our honor awards, but all the way along, uh, we've had some fantastic projects, including this one uh, in Biddeford, along with the huge mills that have been redone. Uh, this humble building that was featured on the cover of the National Park Service's annual tax credit report. Uh, Stevens Hall in Hollowell, uh, part of the campus up there that's been beautifully uh, redone um, by Matt Morrill um, and many others. Uh, our Summer Fellows Program uh, continues to provide help and one of our Summer Fellows, uh, Gabby Perlman, is working with us right now. Um, and uh, we offer fellowships uh, for students that are working both with hands-on and uh, with uh, policy work in uh, uh, at our, uh, our headquarters. Um, and we're partnering with Preservation Timber Framing, Begala Windows, and the Heritage Company Coppersmiths. Finally, we had a very successful challenge, uh, thanks to uh, John Wazaleski and the Ocean View uh, Company uh, to raise $300,000 uh, to help bolster our operations. Um, and uh, we're very grateful for his, uh, his involvement. Um, I forgot about that little trick. And um, uh, two new grant programs in the last couple of years, uh, the Northern Border, Border Regional Commission, which is a collaboration with New Hampshire Preservation Alliance, Preservation Trust of Vermont, and uh, the Preservation League of New York State, which brought $230,000 into Maine, including doing the Farwell project in Thorndike, uh, which is a very exciting uh, getting the general store back open in that uh, small town. Um, and also the 1772 Foundation. We've just finished our second year with them. Um, and uh, we're very excited about that. Um, and they are uh, pledging to get involved again with us next year and maybe even guaranteeing the next two years. Um, and uh, the 1772 Foundation one awardee was the Francis Perkins uh, Homestead, a uh, name for the famous Department of, of Labor Secretary. Um, we've been very involved in new educational programming this year with our rehab lab uh, and monthly webinars and have gotten uh, about 800 folks attending those meetings. I guess we're now uh, getting closer to 900 um, and uh, involved in all of these kinds of projects, which you've heard uh, much about. Um, and uh, finally, 
Uh, our most endangered historic place, uh, one of them, uh, it really is, is a sign of the times. We still have buildings from the 2008 recession that can't get freed up uh, from, uh, from various uh, uh, liens. Um, and yet we now have a whole new um, challenge in the real estate market uh, with the market being hotter than ever in Maine's history. I also wanna thank our preservation champions who have made um, our life uh, so much better and easier um, and really helped fund our operations in a major way uh, that Toby read and also uh, our sponsors who have been uh, fantastic uh, over the years and also uh, very, uh, very supportive. Most of these uh, sponsors are involved with our work um, and it's been gratifying uh, that they see what we do and they also are, are big funders. And then a number of foundations uh, that we are also very gra uh, grateful for. So the future of preservation, we've got to understand it's unqualified popular success. It's an enormous impact. Uh, we need to be involved in training professionals, understanding sustainability, uh, that we can both move forward and bring the past with us enriching our lives. Uh, and get a broader engagement in making projects happen. Let's not, as uh, Longfellow said, waste our own vitality. Um, so thank you for making our work possible. I want to thank the staff team over the years. Some of these people only worked with us for a couple of weeks. Carolyn Lockwood helped uh, during a very difficult period right after I got here. Um, and um, and uh, drawing a line under uh, uh, just above Ali Barrio Nuevo, uh, the last five are the team that we've had together that have had to totally remake the organization. And Ali and Anna, as most of you know, have uh, moved on in the last week uh, to new jobs. Um, but this team has worked better than any team I've ever worked with in my career under the most challenging of circumstances. So I want to thank all the people that have worked uh, for the trust and uh, I mean for uh, Maine Preservation over the years. And I particularly want to uh, acknowledge the, uh, the last folks. And then finally, uh, at the risk of, uh, of uh, naming names, I want to thank all of the trustees of the board who have been fantastic. Um, but I really have to name a few names. Earl's never been a trustee, but he's been a regular all the way along and the Maine Historic Preservation uh, Commission office. And thank you, Kirk, for your kind comments and yours too, Anne, as collaborators. Sally Rand and Chris Glass have been two of the longest term uh, folks involved. Uh, Sally just passed away a few years ago and was involved for more than 40 years, as has Chris. Ann Niles has been involved almost as long as them. Um, and during my tenure, Susan Burns and Holly Mitchell and Lucy Foster Flight and Toby Scott. Uh, thank you very much and thank you to all the board members and forgive me for not mentioning you. And finally, thanks to Lynn and Burke who have put up with uh, my ridiculous approach to life uh, for many years. Uh, uh, great, to, uh, great to be here today and looking forward to hearing Tara. Thanks.